Everyone, it's Reed, your favorite crazy person, back again with a video. And yes, I've been a little slow on the videos because I've been busy, crazy busy. But we're going to get stuff as fast as we can, as quick as we can, and do what we can. But I want to give you a garden update. So here we have the barren wasteland. Actually has lush green plants in it. Crazy things afoot, right? Well, I kind of know what I'm doing in a desert. <laughs> but the other thing is I want to give everyone a good motivational speech and kick in the pants. All right, so remember this barren wasteland. Here, let's take a look at a photo. Looks cr like crud, right? People said, Reed, you'll never grow anything there. I beg to differ. <laughs> now this is Hopi blue corn, and it's doing a good job. Down here, we even have soybeans. Ooh, terrifying things, right? Well, they're really good nitrogen fixers. And they even have nice purple flowers they're gonna make pods on. I have no idea what these things actually look like as they make pods, because first time growing them. <laughs> But learn it from. And it's good to experiment. Find out what grows, what doesn't grow, and everything else. But one of the things I want to point out here, so we put this down. I didn't even know what exactly we were going to do, how we were going to do it, how we were going to set it up. Just got to put things down. And I laid down a bunch of, you know, the drip irrigation lines, you know. You can see some of the drip irrigation here. Laid it down and just put it up. Ran into a problem, you know. The drip irrigation zone I made was too big. So when I turned it on, you know, the little spigots, they would only make a, a little tiny trickle, just a little trickle out their ends. Well, there's only too many, so many spigots you can put on a zone. And I didn't realize that at first for some reason, you know, because I apparently never made a giant drip irrigation system. Apparently you can do like, depending on the flow rates and all that, like these, you know, circle ones, like this guy sitting over here, you can put about uh, 22 to 30, depending on how turned up or low they are, in a zone. So I had to put other drip irrigation stuff down. Okay, okay, so we, so we do that. We get more zones. Instead of this being a single, I have four, four linked in with a control over here. See, so I can turn it on and off and stuff like that. Added the more zones, right? And here's one of the, you can see the beans here growing with this nectarine tree. The tree's pretty sad though. I don't know, if it makes it through the season, you know, it'll probably take off in the spring. If not, get in replace. Now over here, very good happy beans, very good. And the tree looks great. So I'm not worried about that tree at all. See the other corn here. This is a, the popcorn I've been growing that uh, gets, you know, really tall, like eight, nine feet tall stalks. But it's short right now compared to this Hopi blue corn. Why? Well, I planted it at a later time. Like I said, I was working through these things. And one of the things I ran into quickly also is so I had to make dams because the water did not flow correctly between the zones, right? You know, it wasn't level at all. So I leveled as best I could, made dams, trapped water, stuff like that. The other thing I found out is once I started partitioning the drip zones, then suddenly things quit watering at the right weight rate. I had some areas that were getting totally flooded and the plants were yellowing and getting cr cranky at me. So I had to split that up, change out emitters to be flags, changed out other stuff to be bare, have nothing, just let the water flow in, you know, put more dams in places to control it, stuff. Yes, I have weeds everywhere. We keep pulling tons and tons of weeds, you know, Lee and I out here, tuk, tuk, lots of grass too. You know, kind of wish I had a goat or something to eat all the grass. <laughs> of course the goat would eat everything else, but that's a different point. You know, so I didn't really have a giant plan when I was going to do this. I said I wanted to grow more food. And I have this area of land, barren, that was semi-flat that I could start on right now. And that's what I did. I just laid stuff down and then went at it. You know, planted stuff, saw what came up. I started seeing what problems existed, what other issues I was dealing with. I started looking to see, you know, how to get things going better. I was added, you know, soybeans because I wanted to fix nitrogen because I knew the corn was going to be unhappy without the nitrogen. We also have, you know, squash growing in here. It's very tiny yet. It's not very big. They're just getting moving. And we just solved one problem after the other, one problem after the other. And see, that's the thing I think a lot of people get trapped on. They say, oh, I want to do this. And then they start imagining all this stuff in their mind. They start planning stuff, start analyzing it, looking at every from every angle, looking at everything, just all this stuff. But they never do anything. They never get on the going, right? What's it called? Uh, analysis paralysis. It's a big issue. 
And tons of people at my job that I work with are the same way. Um, they will spend months and months trying to make a decision for just work projects that it's just like, just start on it. All right. You know, I didn't know I needed to have other zones. I didn't know how flat or not flat the soil was, uh, what the ground was going to be like, how it was going to drain, how it would trap water and everything else, how we'd have good spots and bad spots for the corn. I, I didn't know anything. I just said, let's clear the area, put seeds in the ground, put water to them, and we'll sort out each problem. We'll identify a problem. Oh, I need, I got too much uh, spigots on one zone for the drip. Well, let's cut that off. We'll put a splitter in and make a new zone. Okay. You know, oh, I got water pooling in too much of an area. Let's build a dam. Okay. Um, oh, we got a big problem with the water getting trapped and not getting to the roots correctly. Okay, let's plant a bunch of other plants, particularly like the soybeans, that their roots can dig into that because they're not bothered by the clay at all, and they fix it in the nitrogen. Okay, no problem. Um, just going on, piece after piece, figuring it out, solving the issue at hand. And then progress happens. See, that's the thing, is you can't usually solve every single issue beforehand. It's an incremental evolutionary process. Once you get to the end, it looks like, wow, look at all the amazing thinking and thought that you put into this, all this sort of stuff that you did. But that's not, it wasn't done all up front. It was done incrementally. And that's where people get stuck all the time, it seems like, is they get stuck in the, all of the issues. They just see this mountain of issues. Well, okay, don't worry about the mountain. Just start on it tackle the very first biggest issue right in front of you, solve that. Okay, once you solve that, move on to the next. The next, just see how things go. Because like, what are we talking about here for failure? This isn't like I'm building the Empire State Building. You know, plants don't grow, all right? Or I don't grow any things like that. So the risk for me isn't that bad. I'm just losing time. But I will get educated. Whatever failure I have will educate me. And that's very important. Failure is a massive, massive educator. And being able to grow stuff in the desert, okay, like being able to get nice big stocks of corn and these aren't even, you know, done growing yet. They got quite a bit more to do. Does not show all the failure I had learning how to garden out here in the desert and grow food. And see, my goal is, so even though I didn't get all of the beds built I want, I'm going to continue building them over the summer. And see, I'm going to move to, I'm going to see how much weight, I'll weigh this out, calculate the calories of what I grew in this area. And see, I'm going to move to growing multiple corns in the season instead of spending labor trying to get land ready. I can get this going right away, till everything in at the end of the season, get it prepped. And then when the land's ready to work, plant it in and get going. Here with our long growing season, with different strains of corn, particularly a painted mountain, I should be able to grow three of it in a season because it will actually get started when the ground's 40 degrees crazy enough this wants it warmer and but i do love myself some blue corn tortillas blue corn enchiladas blue corn tortilla chips i, I like blue corn <laughs> so i'll be growing it at times for flavor and stuff and but it, i can get two seasons of the blue corn very possible here but i'm getting ready so like that so i've got a plan and i'm working it saying okay i know what i'm doing here and so now i can say what does it take to get me there? I have the end goal, and now we're working on getting there. That's one thing I think a lot of people just get trapped on, is they just can't do anything because they see all these problems. They just can't start. But you just got to start. And that's the point. Just start. You can grow your own food. Right? Is this enough to feed me for a year? No. I need about an acre all set up. I got a ways to go. I got to get up there. It's going to take me a while. Yep, but I've started adding more stuff, and I keep adding more. I mean, I'll have the whole front yard filled with everything, too. So you guys will see that in other videos probably next year. And then, of course, when it's winter, I'm going to have winter crops set up, or fall crops for stuff, the things I want to grow. I'm just going to incrementally go at it and get there. But that's my point. Just keep working at it, keep doing things, and you will find success. And just remember, learn from the failures. Analyze what went wrong. Find a way forward. Take care, everyone. This is Reed, out for now.